With Andy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and this is the OTP with Titans head coach Brian Callahan, presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. In the game of health coverage, Farm Bureau Health Plans is the MVP. Tennesseans have relied on their unmatched rates, coverage, and service for nearly 80 years. We welcome in head coach Brian Callahan. Coach, good to see you again this week. Good to be here. I wish it was under better circumstances. I know. I know. We, it'll happen. It'll we be promise. A, it'll be a lot more fun. I you, promise. You mentioned in your press conference that you thought overall Will Levis played better in a lot of facets against the Jets than he did against the Bears. One thing that stuck out to me in kind of watching some things back, Will Levis was not afraid to go at Sauce Gardner one of the best cornerbacks in the league. A lot of young quarterbacks would would not do that, but Will Levis is not afraid. We know he's not afraid when he runs. He's averaging over nine yards a carry. Guy's on pace for over 500 rushing yards this season. Um, sometimes he doesn't slide, and that's not always the greatest thing in the world, but it happens. He did twice. He, he did. did. Twice. He, he did. He got better. We got better to so, this, this past week. I, I guess what I'm getting down to is, as we like to say, he ain't scared. Mm-hmm. No. And, and, we, and we know this. That fearlessness is a tremendous attribute to an NFL quarterback. Fearlessness can lead to recklessness, though. The two are sort of intertwined. So how do you, as a quarterback guru, accentuate the quarterback's fearlessness and mitigate the recklessness while still keeping him being who he really is. Yeah, that's the trick. Um, (laughs) Because you have to be able to be fearless enough to stand in that pocket and and make a throw. And you have to be fearless enough to pull the ball down and run and not be worried about getting hit. And standing in the pocket when people are bearing down on you. Those things are all traits that Will has that – are going to serve him well in his career. Um, and then you just have to mitigate the mistake part of it where there is a time to cut your losses. And not every play has to be this hero creation, get out of trouble, get make a crazy throw off platform, off balance. That's not really what you need to do. A lot of playing quarterback in the NFL is doing boring things doing mundane tasks and that's completing the football taking a check down and holding onto the ball when you're getting sacked and just take the sack we'll we'll live for the next play as as i've said a million times to over my careers is there's a time and a place for for trying to extend a play for um playing off schedule and off structure with with a little bit of recklessness which requires uh and then there's a time where just Sometimes the sack is the best play, and you have to learn that. And I think, I think we are on track to learn that at this point with Will, and I, he understands the situational part of it versus um, just the purely I need to make a play part. But you understand my question, though, mm-hmm. right? in terms of I'm watching it back and I'm going, he's going right at Sauce Guard. Yeah, he. We and, felt and, and, good about our matchup too. I, I don't know that there's a whole lot of people that can cover Calvin Ridley, right? Mm-hmm. And we felt like he, Calvin's Calvin's ability to to run vertically with speed and to change direction and make cuts and get out of the break makes him a really unique player. And there's not a lot of guys that can do what Calvin does. And so we weren't afraid that that would be a hard matchup. We knew that Sauce would probably at points be on Calvin, and we weren't going to be afraid to throw it to him. And sometimes Sauce is going to win, but as we saw, sometimes when you take those chances, you're able to win as well and win big. Correct. Like yeah. on the touchdown. Yeah, there was some really nice. There was some really nice plays. Uh, there was the one out route that we threw in that last drive as well on a third down. That pretty ball. Beautiful timing, footwork, protection, throw route. I mean the whole thing. And that's sort of what I my message was today with our team is that there's a lot of that which is all of the things that we look for, all the things that, on all three phases. There's really good things happening. We just have to mitigate the ones that have hurt us. And I think we like the result. So have you noticed after reviewing the tape from week two that some of your younger players are making those improvements, are continuing to make some of those changes from week one to week two? Yeah, that the, the most noticeable was the two offensive linemen on the left side for us on offense was – 
Uh, but JC's improvement from week one to week two was pretty pretty dramatic. Um, he did a much better job. Same with Pete. Uh, Peter was really, really good uh, in the second part of, of this progression. And to see those guys make those adjustments and improvements was really positive. I think, you know, defensively, we don't have a lot of young players on defense right now. You know, that's that's probably why our defense has played so well at the Stars because we have so many veteran players that um, have played a lot of football and they understand how to play together. And um, But I think that, you know, even Jarvis Brownlee continues to, to develop and play a role and play good on, plays well on special teams for us. Um, so yeah, we we've got young players doing good things and, and contributing. And obviously, Tavondre is another young player that plays a lot for us. So those are all exciting things that young players are developing. And there's there's there is a jump week to week to week for those those guys. And it's not always linear. It's not just they're just constantly improving. Sure. But there is there's weeks where they do really nice things. Were was there any difference in how the Jets chose to block or handle Tavondre Sweat? Um, no, they, they tried to run the, their offense the way they tried to run it, but I think you just, they were just, just, our guys were disruptive and you could see the difference this week, whereas Tavondra had some splash plays last week, this week he was doing a little more of the dirty work. I mean, he was eating up double teams and you could see Ernest and, and Kenneth just ripping through gaps because there was nobody on the second level to block him. And that's the other part of his job that it's not going to be as exciting, um, to, to watch on TV, but it's just as important and just as effective to eat up those double teams and let our run, linebackers run. Overall, did the Jets' offensive line make some of those adjustments? Like, bigger picture, did you see that there was some difference from week one to week two? Uh, no, not not anything out of the ordinary. I mean, they, they did a nice job. They got they were a little more empty, you know, kind of five-man protection, got the ball out quick because I think our, our defensive line put some pressure on them early. You could see their adjustment was to, to let Aaron get it back there and check it out and see it and – make a couple quick throws and, and get the ball out of his hand because the, the pressure was, was pretty relentless to start the game uh, on their on their offense. So um, I didn't see anything dramatically different schematically uh, that would have changed what they did. There's a lot of conversation about the big guys on this Titans defense, but Harold Landry had two sacks in this last game against the Jets, and he kind of continues to be this presence within the defense. What does he contribute? Um, just that. I mean, there's a when you have an edge rusher – that gets production on the quarterback. And then you have two interior players that are ha- difficult to handle. And then Arden has done a really nice job in his role. Um, it affects the way that the quarterback feels. I mean, we we all know that when the quarterback feels pressure and they get hit, they don't like it. Um, and Harold's done a really good job of producing on the quarterback. And a lot of – two one of the sacks this week and one of them last week was really because of the unselfishness of Jeff Simmons' rush. You know they're in they're in a game and just all Jeff's job to do is just to occupy and penetrate vertically and Harold's looping and Harold does a great job finishing the loop uh, and finishing on the quarterback but a lot of it's because there's other guys working to help get him open just like on offense when your receivers are running routes to clear space Jeff's clearing space so Harold can go rush and I think that's what makes that unit really good is they they're all really unselfish. It feels like in watching them too Jeffrey Simmons had five tackles in the game but it feels like his time is coming very quickly in terms of being able to get to the quarterback based on what he's been able to do. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, and again, part of that is because he's been asked to do some other things to help because he, he garnered so much attention. Um, boy, that short yardage play, though, you want to talk about impact play? I yeah. mean, he swims the guard and then he ejects the – or he swims the center and ejects the guard back into the backfield and then makes the tackle. That allowed Ernest to go fit it on top of it and the two of them hit him for a two-yard loss on a third and one. I mean, those are the – those are way more impactful than a sack sometimes, you know, and that's what he does. He just he impacts the game on a lot of different levels. Ernest Jones got his first start since you traded for him. Nine tackles, two tackles for lost yardage. Uh, it feels like he's everything he was cracked up to be. I mean, it was, he was a four-year starter and a team captain and a um, – you know, I, I I don't know their reasoning for why I wanted to make the move, but I'm glad they called and I'm glad we made the move because he's we we felt like he was a player that could really help our defense and help that position. We were a little bit thin after some injuries in training camp, and we had a need there. and And to get a player at his caliber, um, we knew would would eventually have an impact once he got more comfortable. And I think as he gets another week comfortable, he's going to be another week better uh, in the system. But man, I'm really glad we have him. Is explosion the main thing he adds? Yeah, he's is a physicality. Um, he's kind of similar to like how Kenneth is in terms of heavy downhill, physical. Um, still can run well, still can cover sideline to sideline, but just the physicality is the part that 
you see from him a lot. It's like an AFC North linebacker. Sure is. <laughs> sure is. That's what they, that's what they look like. Yeah. Hey, Titans fans, celebrate each Titans win and enjoy the sweet taste of victory with a free donut at Kroger the very next day. Just download your digital coupon to score your free donut at any Kroger store. It's our way of saying thanks. Now let's be clear, it's one free donut per transaction while supplies last. Kroger, fresh for everyone and official grocer of the Tennessee Titans. Tighten up. Home is at the forefront of all that we do. It's why we're so committed to caring for the places and spaces in which we work and live. Ashley, the official furniture provider of the Tennessee Titans. We continue with head coach Brian Callahan. Coach Tony Pollard had 102 yards from scrimmage against the Jets. What does he continue to bring to this Titans offense? Um, versatility. And he's, he's a really good running back. He's really good as a runner. Um, he's got great vision and patience and then burst to pick up yards after contact. He's got some elusiveness. And then in the pass game, I mean – we hit him on a 20-yard vertical down the field pass, and we hit him on use him in the screen game, and we use him out of the backfield. So there's, he just has the ability to be like that's what I envisioned when when Tony got here was a guy like that that could have, you know, 12 rushes and six catches, and he's going to account for 100 and something yards every week he steps out there, and that's that's very valuable. Um, he's he's and he's a he's I love everything about how he plays football. He's he's a really really good football player. You touched on. Uh, Calvin Ridley in our last segment. What we saw yesterday, four catches, 77 yards and a touchdown, one rush for a touchdown. Is that just kind of the tip of the iceberg in terms of how you see him being able to be used in this offense? I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he's uh, all the different ways. I mean, we move him all over the place. Um, we put a lot on his plate uh, mentally. He does a great job handling it, uh, both in the run game and in the pass game. Uh, the fact that we could get that, you know, he's done a lot of those motions over the first part of the preseason and the first regular season game, and to get him a uh, a jet sweep was really, really good. Worked really well, exactly how we hoped it would, but that's what I see. And then really, we left some plays on the field to him too, and I think he's he's a catch or two away from, from having a, you know, a hundred and something yard game as opposed to those, you know, the 60s and 70s. I think we find another way, two, three more completions, and, you know, he has the one that he dropped on the third down. You call yeah. that a drop? That one was, yes. Okay. Yeah, that one was <laughs> I a drop. Just, yeah, I just yeah. wonder how you – we have not heard how you grade yet. Yeah, so. he, would, he would call it a drop too, I would imagine. Um, that one was – that one could have – that was that was the 100-something yarder to, 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 to big third down, put us down the red zone again, chance to win the game. That was a, a big play, and I think that there's going to be more and more of that. And he's getting more comfortable. Will's getting more comfortable with him, and I think that – uh, this is just the beginning for what he can be. Uh, he's such a dynamic player. You're a tough grader. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way it is. I mean, you know, there's the the teams that are really playing well make those plays. Right. Um, they make the they make the contested catch that Burks had. They we we were just a we're a, we're we're so close. We're so close to being really good. Um, and so the only, the only way to get better is to be critical and hopefully you, you, you make those adjustments and you make those coaching points and, and we're better the next time. So in, in from that standpoint, just to follow one further bit, if you have that level of expectation that you expect that catch to be made, do you find as time goes on that catch ends up getting made? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's always standard. Um, there's always an expectation. And I think that, most guys rise to meet those. Um, all the great competitors I've been around always end up. They want to be held to that high standard. They want. They want the expectation to be they're going to make the play. And I think the more that you do that, uh, the more it becomes part of who you are as an offense. Um, and everyone sort of responds to those things. So when we talk about standards on offense, it seems as though the run game is closer to the standard. What is it going to take to get the passing game on the same level? Um, I think the more we play, the better we're going to get. Um, that's just natural progression of things. Uh, I think Will has done a really nice job uh, in a lot of areas, and there's some areas that he needs to get better at, and I think he has. I think the, the week one improvement to week two 
to me was really encouraging. You take the the silly play that he made out of it, and there's a lot of really positives from the game that were better than they were the week before. And I told him bef- before we I came up here that that's that's all we're looking for is be better the next week. If you made a mistake the first week, don't make it again. If you had to correct something the second week, don't do it in the third week. And I think that progression is really going to help him. Um, and then as 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 um, as Hop gets gets back to form, and and I said in my press conference too, I got to do a better job of getting him involved earlier in the game. And I think the ball gets distributed a little bit more evenly and makes it a little bit harder to defend overall. It's not just throwing to Calvin. Uh, I think we'll be a lot better for it. All right. So there is a trend around the league, though. Teams running games seem to be far ahead of their passing attacks through two weeks, 14 100-yard rushers and only five 300-yard passers. Do you have a theory as to why? I don't, and I think that that's really it's really interesting. The beginning of this season compared to seasons past, and I'm sure at the end of the season it'll all sort of bear out. But this early part, um, you're just you're seeing such an emphasis on limiting explosive plays and making offenses, rightfully so, making offenses drive the field and do it do it the hard way. Complete, you have to go five for five and rush for forty yards to get score a touchdown every time you touch the ball, and that that's hard to sustain that kind of success series by series. Uh, and so, yeah, there's 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 something happening right now in the NFL that's, that's different, and I, I can't quite put my finger on it, um, but there definitely is a – it's a different style that's being played, whether people are running the ball more because there's more two high shells, but they're running it better against those two high shells. And maybe there's some teams playing with the two high shells that aren't built to stop the run with a two high shell, and so there's more runs, more rushes happening more often. Um, you have a lot more young quarterbacks playing early in the season. So there's probably a, a bunch of factors that a lot of people that are way smarter than me have a better idea about. But um, there definitely is a change in dynamic on, on offensive football this early part of the year. So let's talk about Sunday's opponent in the Green Bay Packers because teams that rush. They wow. had 53 rushes for 261 yards against Indianapolis yesterday. Um, and that's a lot. <laughs> you don't sure really see NFL teams that committed to running the football. How hard g- does that make game planning on your defensive staff? Um, that it's it's not totally. It's a little bit different for us on the other side because they have a new coordinator. But for them, like at least Matt's been there for a while. The style of offense is is you can go back and watch some things and what they like to do and all that. Um, but yeah, I mean you you you're getting ready for a team that's going to try to run it right at you and our team has responded well to that for the most part through two games and that's going to be a tough that's going to be a tough matchup when you just when it's going to be a almost old school approach in that regard if they're going to run it that many times then um, you got to be ready to to go defend it that many times and and make it so they don't want to run it that many times you have if there's no production in the run game you're not going to keep handing it off you're going to try to find other ways to, to gain yards and It'll be a tough test. I mean, they, they did a really good job. I mean, that's an impressive outing on the ground for any team at any point, and they did a really nice job. Well, Indy's defense is not chopped liver either. No, not at all. They've, they've been they one got of some the dudes. better defenses yeah. up front in the league. And, um, yeah, that's an impressive performance by the Packers offensively for sure. So, philosophically, do you go into this week with the thought, okay, we're going to prepare for Jordan Love? Is that how you is that how you think about it, or do you even think about it? You have to be ready for it. Absolutely, I know we'll we'll watch we'll watch all that. Jordan's been turned into a, a really nice quarterback in the league, and Henson had really finished his season really well last year and had a good opening game. And I do believe that if he's got a chance to play, he'll try to be out there for his team. We have to be ready for for that prospect, um, and then you just you get you react to whatever the outcome is for the Sunday's active roster. So we'll prepare for it. We'll be ready for it. Um, but you also got to prepare for Malik. Malik did a nice job. Did a great job. He, ha- really happy not, for him. Not surprisingly, he went in and, and played well and had a tremendous amount of composure. Do they change? I mean, I know they ran a lot. They didn't throw as much. He's new to the offense. But philosophically, do they change much if they change quarterbacks? Um, I think they let they put the ball in Jordan's hands more often than more. Jordan's. Sure. I mean, he's he's going to take, uh, he's earned the right to have that. I mean, he's done a nice job. So yeah, it changes a little bit. But um, you know, look, Malik is Malik's a capable and talented player, and 
I liked a lot of things about what Malik did for us in the preseason. Um, it turns out this opportunity was the right one for him. He had a chance to go play, and that was that was what um, we were hoping for. And I'm happy that he that he's played well. And the thing that he did a great job of is he didn't he didn't lose them the game. He didn't make any mistakes that would have cost him the game. He he managed it just how I'm sure they asked him to. Um, and he did a really nice job with what was asked of him, and everybody else around him played really well. And that's how you that's how you handle that situation and go win a football game. And they, you know, tip of the cap to the Packers and Matt Lafleur and his his staff. They did a great job of getting ready and being committed to a particular way of playing the game, and they did a great job. You mentioned that there's some new stuff within the defense. What sticks out to you about that side of the ball for the Packers? Um, just it's just you don't know what. The scheme is fully yet. You know, they only had two games. Um, it's a coordinator that's been in college for a while, has, has a long NFL background, but is coming from college experience. And so, what does it look like? What is he? Who who is he? You know, what what family has he come from? What what does he believe in? And has that changed over time? And so it's just it's just a small sample size for us. Um, they got talented players on defense there. Um, it's it's been they've been a really good football team um, over the last handful of years, and. Um, so that that's the challenge is finding finding who who do they want to be on defense schematically and, and what do we have to do to counter that and where do we find those you know there's not a lot of tape to go look at hey titans fans seat geek makes it easy to find tickets so you can be a part of all the touchdown celebrations this season whether you're buying or selling football tickets seat geek is the place to do it SeatGeek is the official primary ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. The most disruptive idea in ticketing, a ticket that works. Expect the expected. SeatGeek. SeatGeek. <laughs> Made a rookie mistake this football season? Maybe you should have had a Snickers. Because now you can enter for the chance to turn those rookie mistakes into prizes, including a trip to Super Bowl 59. Visit snickers.com slash rookie mistakes for details. While we wrap up here, you've mentioned a lot that you have to be able to ride the highs and the lows of a football season. You can't get too high. You can't get too low. You've got to keep an even keel. Yep. How do you model that for your team in the way that you coach and the way that you prepare? I just try to be as consistent as I can with the message after a game, um, with how I carry myself in the building and with how I interact with the players, um, that it doesn't change because we've lost or it doesn't change because we've won. Um, that when they walk in the building every Monday and every Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, uh, they know exactly what I'm going to be like. And I think that that's important. And I work, I work hard to make it that way. It's, it's, in, it's, and it's, in, it's intentional and, um, it's not always easy because you do, there is emotions involved in all these things. And, um, so you, but you just, you have to really fight against the riding the up and down emotions of what what an NFL season can feel like. And uh, right now, it doesn't feel really good. Uh, being 0-2 is not where we thought we would be, not where we're capable of being. We're capable of being much better. Um, but I think that there's a importance to the for the players to know when they walk in, they know what the tone's going to be, how it's going to look. Um, and we can be critical, uh, both in wins and losses, and but consistently critical. So it's not like we just pretend like everything's great and we win and we're terrible when we lose. There's just – Here's what we have to do better. Here's why. Here's where we could have lost the game if we won. We haven't won yet. We will. And then here's where here's where we did. This is what did contribute to us losing this game, and we can't have these things happen. And I think you take a very matter-of-fact approach to the good and the bad. You're critical where critical is worthy, and, and you're, you praise where praise is worthy. And there's that's every week in the NFL. And uh, you just have to keep finding ways to try to be on the winning side of it. It's a lot easier to do it that way. Brian Callahan, thanks so much for the time. You got it. For Brian Callahan and Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and this is the OTP.